Welcome back. While we're continuing with our conversation this evening, looking at young people and the youth vote, are young people just not interested in politics in South Africa? Or are they just absolutely disenfranchised with what's been happening in the political landscape to a point where they don't trust the politicians? While we're getting into this matter with young politicians in the studio, Hasia Hassan is with us from the ANC Youth League. Luyo Lompiti is the DA's youth leader. Mlungi Simabaso leads the IFP Youth Brigade. And Nongo Soto has just joined us as contesting in the upcoming local government elections as an independent. Nongo, I'm going to bring you into this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Independence. Yes. Do they have a space? So first of all, independents are not even in the National Assembly, so you guys couldn't even sign that electoral code of conduct, not really. <laughs> uh, but also it's going to be much harder to convince young people that you need to be the councillor of choice. How do you plan on doing that? No, most definitely. Thank you for inviting me and greetings to even to your listeners. I think one of the fundamental that we should highlight is that young people for so long have been deceived to think that local elections have everything to do about political parties. Local elections have got nothing to do with political parties. Oh. And the aim of me contesting lo uh, local elections is to actually conscientize young people that you don't need political parties to have a community activist, to have a councillor in your ward, in your community. And that is what is important. But young people are not only disfranchised, young people are not only discouraged, young people are not only disinterested in politics, but young people have been deceived. And that's the truth. And that is what has created young people to lose interest in politics because pol local elections when we ask what are local elections all about mm. they're all about community activism so if you wake up today and you have a problem as a parent about your child having to go to grade 8 and you're struggling to get your child there you go to a particular person that will help you you don't go to a political office you don't go to a political party and we need them to redefine politics in that sense and it's so unfortunate I was listening to the colleagues here that they're trying to fight their space within their political parties why fight your space within our political parties when political so are they parties, deceiving people these ones they, they part of it in oh, a way. So they're part because of the deception. How do you then keep on begging old people to have a platform in the space? Can you please have a Congress? Can you please recognize us? It's been long. For too long, the voices of young people have been undermined. They have been suppressed. They have not been given a platform. And in many cases, they are modified. They must check your speech. They must redirect what you want to say. Mm. Or, or they take it as if it's their own idea. So young people in South Africa are talented. Young people in South Africa are conscious. Let them realize their space, their potential, their ability, and contest elections as independent candidates. And when we unite as young people contesting elections as independent candidates, it it won't be difficult for us to make young people vote for us. Yeah. So you're saying we need more activism and less politics. Exactly. So in other words, here for Siha, there, Mlungi, Si, as well as Luyolo, are irrelevant. Exactly. Huh? In fact, what, what actually distracted our struggle when we were saying fees must fall, it's politicizing the struggle. Mm. The fact that suddenly now EFF, DA, ANC wants to see themselves to market their brand. They are destabilizing us. They are destabilizing the content. We want free decolonized quality education. Does that have a political it, it, color? It, it doesn't here. have a color. As, as somebody who was very involved in the Fees Must Fall movement, mm. as somebody who was very much on the ground, um, who was there very much when we started it, um, I can very much agree with you that we need more young people in the space. There's no doubt on that. But what I think we shouldn't do is dissociate politics from where we are. Everything is political whether we like it or not. The shoes we wear, the people we vote for, where we go, the fact that we're having this discussion is inherently political. Where I think we need to take that discussion um, is whether that is a partisan discussion, right? And in many ways, myself, and I'll, I'm sure, I'm not too sure actually what my other colleagues will say, um, but the reality is that we as young people want to change things, right? And if we want to change things, we want to change things mass scale. How do you change things mass scale? You enter into the political arena. Is it a perfect system? Not at all. But the reality is, and I want to deal with what Luyolo said earlier, mm. 27 years, more jobs, more houses, more health care, and you want to make the Western Cape versus Gauteng case study, Gauteng will beat you on every single level, whether it is the amount of jobs we've created, whether it is access to healthcare, whether it is education. So we can do this thing of Western Cape Gauteng, sure, but I, I, I'd rather not embarrass the DA um, on a national platform in that regard. Uh, but the reality is today is about young people. Um, mm. And today is really about ensuring that young people take center stage, whether it's at the DA, whether it's an IP, whether it's an ANC, whether it's an independent space. But the reality is young people do need to be prioritized. I'm going to bring him here. Mlungisi, you are frowning extensively at this. Go ahead. Your platform is yours. Well, um, the reality of the matter is that um, the things that uh, our independent candidate is saying, um, the reality is that they do happen within our political parties. It's just that um, uh, they might not be aware. 
uh, because they are not politically active or political aligned to any political party. Um, but the reality is that um, you need to have some form of accountability uh, as well. It shouldn't be about individuals. So when uh, we don't perform as the deployees of our organizations, our organization needs to take accountability of that and recall us and get somebody else into that particular position so that they continue with the mandate of the people. So if an independent candidate, who's, how, are we, how are you going to account to the people? How uh, the residents are going to deal with you? Because if you start with the, with the arrogancy or, or the tendency of not listening to the people, then nobody is going to deal with you because you're an independent candidate and everything is about yourself. So I will, I will, I will, I will say uh, as much as they have given a role to participate in the space, but the reality of the matter is that when it comes to independent candidates, there is yeah. no accountability, and that is the fact. No, I, th I think that's a poor analysis. I think it's important that um, as young people we unite, of course, it's important. Um, the aim here is not to actually uh, expose the lack of knowledge that we have, but to, uh, rather to empower each other. It's important to understand that when you're an independent candidate, you are coming from the community. That's number one. Yes. Secondly, you account to the community. That's, that's number two. What's the difference between myself as an independent candidate and another ca ca candidate from a political party? Is the fact that I'm not coming from a branch structure, the fact that I'm not responding, I'm not accountable to a regional structure or a provincial structure or a national structure, but I'm directly accountable to my community. When I win on the 1st of November, the first thing that should happen on the 2nd of November is to call the community because I cannot work alone. I must then, the community must then appoint 10 committee members who will work with me that are not paid by me, they are paid by the state. Those are the things we don't know, those are the things we don't learn in, in our society, in our political consciousness and space. Mm. So I directly account to those people. I work with the community from the word go and at a point where they're dissatisfied with my work they can recall me so I hear you guys I hear you here's the problem that we're facing and all four of you need to be able to speak to that I'm gonna start with you Liolo though you are having a political consciousness decision uh, a conversation this after this evening which I completely and I take and 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 thank you very much for that at the end of the day there is an 18 year old a 19 year old a 24 year old who could have voted but chose chose consciously not to register to vote for these local government elections because they don't trust you. They don't trust you. They don't trust the elders that you represent. They don't trust the political parties that you represent. They don't trust that you're going to deliver uh, your services. Fasia, you, they don't trust that you're going to fix the potholes as per some of your posters. They don't trust you, DA, that you're actually going to stand for non-racialism. IFP, they don't trust that you're going to give people, uh, young people, an opportunity to govern in their spaces, particularly in, the, in KZN. So there's no trust. Independent candidates, the fact of the matter is they don't know you, so they can't trust you. So how then do you start speaking to the very same constituencies, right? I think it's sitting at about what? About 14 million of them, 13, more than 13 million young people or people that could have registered to vote chose not to register to vote. That's a serious problem. So, Liolo, what do we do to fix? Political school is one thing, but the people there that are 18 are waiting for you guys to give them some kind of direction. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, you know, before I get to that, that, that particular question is also to address uh, our, our really incredible uh, independent candidate who is young and vibrant. And I think that's what we need in the political space is more independent people who are contesting the space. But the truth of the matter is this, is that as an independent in a, in a local council, municipality or metro, one person does not influence any decision making. That's the truth of the matter. Politics is a numbers game. It is about how many numbers can you get to vote for either a motion or a legislation to go through. You need numbers. And you cannot do it as one person in a council of 200 people or in a council of 150 councillors at that. So we need to be honest with ourselves to say if we really want change, we need to vote for a party that actually can represent those numbers and actually sway the numbers in council to actually get legislation passed that benefits the people of this country. Now, to address the second question, Faith, about the question that you're raising about young people and, and bringing young people in the, into the space, the fact of the matter is we only are responsible for our actions and young people need to understand that this country belongs to us. We cannot, we, we cannot be waiting for the older generation to make the decisions or to tell us where to go. The only way we can do it is when we use our vote to either fire or appoint a government that works for us. 
That is the I power of the that vote. Point, I'm going to move on to you, Mlungisi, because time is not on our side. Tell you what, if you were not in the IFP and you were just an ordinary South African looking from the outside in, would you vote for the IFP? Yes, um, looking at their policies and their manifesto, um, I will definitely vote for the IFP and the things that they've done. Um, the reality is that uh, IFP um, in the municipalities where we're governing, we have offered uh, uh, people with uh, students um, uh, with bursaries, um, we have assisted um, um, uh, youth within the communities, we've got youth officers that work with youth on a daily basis. Even if you look at our manifesto now, it tells you what the IFP has done in terms of empowering young people and what we are planning to do. Point, point. If, if I may just interject there, come on, you're telling me that a 19-year-old or 20-year-old is going to sit and look through about 100 pages or 60 pages or 30 pages of a manifesto. How do young people in this country no, actually it's not, vote? It's, not, it's, not, it's only 10-point plans um, of yeah. the IFP manifesto. It's not a thick document, it's not big, and it's straight to the point. Um, you know, we are not giving history and, 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 and empty promises. It's something that we have done, and it's something that... And, and it's practical because we even explain in our manifesto on, on how we are going to implement all those things. So we, we, we can ask the residents of, uh, uh, of this country to look at the IFP manifesto because it's not a thick document, it's very short, it's straight to the point, and it addresses the issues that are faced by young people on a daily basis. I hear you. Then for you, Fesia, uh, when we're looking at uh, the upcoming local government elections, you know what is very disheartening is that the ANC keeps saying we will provide formal housing, we will fix the potholes, we will, we will. It would have been nice for a change to have the ANC say, we have done and give a report of good results. Where do you start in being able to even change the messaging around? Maybe they need to start consulting you guys as the youth. I will always be in favor of more young people being consulted. So that's, that's a yes on that one. Um, but I, there is a great deal that the ANC has done. I think part of the difficulty with being in the incumbent is there's always a different lens put on the incumbent, which there should be, of course. We have done all of these things. Um, and the realities, I mentioned it a little bit now about the housing, about healthcare, about education. Um, I think it's always about being more forward thinking. A manifesto is out, this is what we have done, yes, but this is what we're going to do. And I think that's why you see this is what we will do. But let me address two important things that I think link to your question. How do we speak speak to young people? How do we get young people to be as passionate as the four of us here who are crazy enough to be in party politics or just to contest? We need to speak directly to issues of young people. Youth unemployment is an absolute crisis and it is something that is being prioritized. We see a lot of government departments, yes, working in different silos. We need a bigger streamlining. We're seeing right now with the youth presidential stimulus package, more and more job opportunities are going to be created. The president has been able to bring a vast amount of investment and the private sector which is where a lot of these jobs are going to have to be created from. So we need tangible things. I don't think that young people are stupid. Young people are not at all uh, uh, stupid or apathetic. I think that young people are just disillusioned and angry, and we need more tangible reasons behind it. Um, so, yes, we, we focused on that, but I want to speak a little bit uh, to what Nongo said earlier around candidate selection. This year is the first year in which the ANC has run community meetings where every single community could choose who the ANC candidate is, and that's an incredibly powerful thing, particularly because we are the governing party. It it means that young people, every single community member can choose who that council is going to be internal to the ANC. And I think we're going to see a much more different kind of uh, council. We're going to see more and more different kinds of ward candidates. Um, and this is the first time we'll be seeing more and more young people come to the fore. Are we where we should be? No, but we're definitely in the right direction and heading there. Guys, I have to wrap up this conversation, but uh, all the best to all of you uh, for the local government elections as well. Though I wish I could take in more time. I know you're impassioned <laughs> as a you're young person, but, but you're going to probably have to come back yes. and you're going to have to probably speak That's to your elders as well. Young people. Yeah. Start recognizing independent. You said people don't know me. No, media doesn't know me because media does not follow up on young people and the project they're doing. I'm running a youth organization called Abacha Force of Change. We've done a great work. We're doing agricultural projects as we speak in our community. We are, talk, we are taking young people to rehabilitation centers. Yeah. We have a waste project that we are already running. Yeah. So young people who are not 82 know me. What I have done, I've ensured that the young people are registered to vote. But we must make sure that we hold ANC and IEC accountable for lack of voter education. All right, that's where we'll leave it. Will you trust these political party representatives in the upcoming local government elections? Well, the 1st of November, South Africa, is the one time that you actually get to tell. Uh, I have to thank my guests there from the ANC, Fasia Hassan, IFP's Mlungi Simabaso, and the DA's Luo Lombi. And of course, Nongo Solo, who is an independent candidate. The 1st of November, that is where you get to decide South Africa. And perhaps that is when the power truly lies in your hands.